G'day. Slightly different angle thing on things today. Uh, a special guest chuck arrived in my workshop and so I'm going to just show a few chucks and measure some run out and have a little bit of fun with that and uh, we'll, we'll see how that eventuates. This is where it all starts. The way that lathes used to be uh, run was with a centre and you'd put a centre in the, in the headstock, centre in the tailstock and in the ends of your workpiece you'd have centres and it would sit on those and um, you know you'd be guaranteed that you'd be uh, accurate you know the axis of the centres would be accurate to the axis of the lathe um, I think that's right to use them in, in most lathes you, you use an adapter um, this is one I made up for this lathe and, and uh, as I said at the time when I was making up one for a friend um, the camlock cams can interfere with that but basically that will sit in there like that in the tailstock I've got uh, a live centre, this is a ball bearing centre quite nice I was about to show you the vast superiority of the uh, turning between centres but uh, it looks like my, my um, test bar here has actually got a bit of slight bend in it uh, and you can tell that by leaving the centres as they are and just rotating the bar and you can see it's going up to two thou there and then down to one and a half something like that uh, if I rotate the whole thing with the centres I'm getting around about maybe a, a thou worth of run out the theory is there you you know if you some, have something set up on centres uh, it will always go back on those centres but uh, it's as good as your centres um, so you know I need to have a look at this and work out what's happening here whether I've got uh, a, a bent test bar whether I've got centres which are uh, you know past their use by date don't know have to find that out fortunately I don't do much centre work anyway this is my usual forge or chuck that I use I do have a couple of these depending on what size I want but this is the one I usually usually use for grabbing bar stock I'm not going to test the run out on this because basically you, get, you adjust the jaws to get zero run out so for applications where you want it spot on uh, for instance you've turned one end of a bar and then you're turning it round and you wanted to get it spot on uh, this is the the sort of chuck you'd be using this is a four jaw uh, independent chuck um, so called because these four jaws work independently you can get um, I believe four jaw scroll chucks so they're self-centering you can and, and you can even get six jaw scroll chucks now six jaw scroll chucks are usually only used for thin wall pipe and that sort of thing um, because the problem is if you've got you know three three lines of contact define a, um, a, a a cylinder and so if you've got six three of those aren't going to be doing any work anyway uh, only with something like a uh, thin wall tube where it's going to distort do you want those extra jaws to to help hang on to things this is my standard go-to three jaw chuck uh, it's a uh, I think it's six and a half inch in diameter or six one of the two um, it's relatively new I don't uh, do terribly much work on it I've, I've probably had it for uh, well five ten years I guess so um, I'd expect that the, the run out on this chuck is, is not going to be too bad but the thing about three jaw chucks is that they work on a scroll so there's a, basically a, a, a spiral in there and the jaws run in the bottom of that and so um, if you're tightening a chuck up with your, your chuck key on something and you graunch it extra hard um, you may end up ending, uh, bending the, um, the, the teeth on the scroll uh, if you let grit get in there uh, it could wear the wear the scroll so they're not ideal uh, this one has got reversible jaws on it too so I could unbolt these jaws turn them round and uh, use them as an external chuck uh, I don't do that because I'm a, I'm a bit concerned that once I lose that register I could have all sorts of uh, fun getting it back so I don't do that but what I'm what I'm going to do is dial that up and just see what the the variation of the uh, the chuck is as I, as I do a full revolution I've got the dial gauge on zero there's a third of a turn and it's moved back three thou another third of a turn 
it's probably a bit over half a thou over the zero position and then back to zero and so just based on this it looks like if I put that on the minimum position there I've got roughly four thou worth of, of run out on this chuck um, now four thou is 0.1 of a millimeter not too bad but it's something that I need to bear in mind. If I'm doing something with this chuck where I'm expecting better accuracy than that, then I need to, to rethink. Another thing about three-jaw chucks, and I'm not sure whether it's an urban myth or not, but there are some people who say that depending on, on which um, key socket you use to tighten it, you can get varying results. And I imagine, particularly with, a, with an older lathe like this where it could be worn, depending on how you put it into the cam lock could be um, could affect results. And so... Uh, for consistency's sake, uh, I try and put um, the the I have the the cam lock positions marked here, and I try and put the the um, the, the chuck in the same orientation uh, with respect to the cam lock every time I use it. This is an ER40 collet chuck. Uh, it takes a standard ER40 collet, and uh, as I think I've explained in another video, when you're using these, you really need to have uh, at least a full length of material in there for them to to crush properly. These things have a range of around about a millimetre and so when they are uh, crushed uh, in, the, in the taper here it, uh, it grips solidly along the whole length there and uh, yeah, a range of about a millimetre uh, then you go up in the next series of, of chucks and there's various sizes uh, going down to ER8 I believe. I've got several sets, I've got a 16, I think I've got a 20, I've got a few 32s, I've got the 40s. Um, depends on what size material you use. They can be used for holding cutters in a, in a milling machine as well as being used to hold material. So uh, versatile sort of gear. But here I've got it set up with my test bar, um, lined up with my cam lock chuck. This collet chuck is homemade and at the time of making it was accurate because I did this bit and attach it to the lathe and then I bored out the taper in the middle. Uh, you can buy these uh, if, you, if you're lucky enough with the size of lathe you've got. You can also uh, get back plates and you can get these um, ER fittings on a, on a basically back plate and assemble them together. So there are ways of, of doing this. Uh, but I just found this was a, uh, an easy enough way to, to do it, and so that's what I did. Uh, with this one, it looks like I've got around about oh, six and a half, seven thousand run out. Now, one of the things you, you, you may find with collets, and I'm going to get, go for a minimum there, so this is the bar is that way. This is the special guest chuck. This doesn't actually belong to me, it's on loan to me at the moment, uh, just to see whether uh, I like it. Um, it's a Bernard, Bernard, Bernard um, multi collet chuck. This is the collet that gets used in these. Uh, this has got a bit of surface rust on it, as the collet has, but that's uh, because of the way it's been stored, I believe. It's, it's just sat on a shelf. Um, they work, they've got these six blades they're spring loaded and as the collet is wound in the, um, the, the, the blades push into the center there. This one goes from 5 8 to 3 quarter. Uh, they've all got numbers this is an EC series and this is a number seven and they go up to inch and a half and down to 1 16th of an inch. Uh, I'm not sure I'd ever use it for, for that sort of thing but uh, I'll be interested to see how uh, how accurate it is. I'm not sure that this uh, chuck has even been used. It seems remarkably free of, of scuff marks and anything like that. There's a key on the, the, the front piece here which locates there. So you pop your collet in, put that in there and then that just winds in. So that's all, all uh, good. If I put my uh, test bar in there and that's it set up ready to go so I've, I haven't I haven't uh, ever 
played with one of these chucks before so I'm not quite sure what to expect but uh, here I am and looks like I've got two about two thousand worth of run out uh, which once again could be the um, the bar looks like it's about three I'm, I'm a little, little surprised that it's it's that sort of um, amount but that doesn't matter it's uh, it's a it's a very easy chuck to use and uh, so I'll probably have a bit of a play with this and uh, and see how it all goes so thanks to uh, Declan for drawing this chuck to my attention and I um, hope this has been uh, an informative little video see you for the next one